hey, you know you can talk to your GoPro? Yes. Um, I'm very lonely, so I do it all the time. <laughs> hey, Mr. GoPro. Oh, you mean to help work it. <laughs> I love you, Mr. GoPro. Oh, hi. When I had the eight, I would not point it exactly where, so I was just off. Oh, my God. I've done so many vlogs where it's like nose up. Oh, so I thought, you know what? I got a good price for the eight, and I just turned around and got into the nine. But I heard the nine had like some problems. Like it wasn't as good as the eight for certain things. Maybe that was just one review I saw. You know what? I have I haven't had any things that I want to complain about with it. Um, but I only use it for my quick talking head yeah. intro to my video. So that's it. That's the only use this thing gets. I was I had this video I was gonna do that it I filmed it twice, and it was why the GoPro is the best camera. That was the title of it, <laughs> because it isn't. You know, it's You're like right. the quality is right. like meh. Mm, but meh. the whole thing, the whole video, um, was around the premise that it's it's a camera that you have with you mm -hmm. has amazing stabilization, and you put it right back in your pocket, and no one even knows. Yeah, you, know. you could you could have it on a train, a bus, and. I remember one time I did have it on a train, and I was filming myself walking down the aisle like mm -hmm. an idiot. And uh, a guy, I could see him. He looked back, like, "What is this guy doing?" Then I sat down. This was during COVID time. All right. And he kept looking back, like, "What was what was that guy doing? What was he doing? Is he filming us so he can kill us later? Yeah. Has he got a bomb in his pocket? And he wants the world to <laughs> yeah, see it. Yeah, yeah. It's it, the kind it, of stuff that would go through my head. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Obviously, looks, I have to think about that a little bit more. Mm. Those, do you mind your filming yourself in public? It could be awkward. Because I notice when you do your videos, it's like a desert wasteland. There's no humans. <laughs> like, hey, guys. And yeah. there's no one around. No, no. I haven't gotten to that level of comfort yet to, yeah. to keep talking when people are like right here. Or they go by you and they stuff. They go by you. Like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. They're looking at me. <laughs> they think I'm weird. No, I haven't got to that level of, of uh, comfort where you don't care. Cover. You, yeah. They don't care. And I do care still. Like I still feel judged. You like know? Kai Wong, I can't believe like him in in London or or Hong, you know when he's in Hong Kong. Yeah. he's he's shooting. He's swinging that camera. He's talking around. about his junk in the public. <laughs> he doesn't care. He's just Kai Wong. You know. <laughs> I think that's his appeal. Is uh, you, he has that I don't care attitude. Uh, but I care. Mm -hmm. I care if people are coming and I'm talking to myself. I lose my train of thought. You lose your train of thought. You kind of like feel like I'm gonna look away. And don't look. Yeah. You put your and, head down. Uh, guys, I uh... you slide the camera down. Yeah. You know, one of my favorite, one of my favorite videos of yours, which you know could be, we could have a top fifty favorite Omar videos. Oh, thanks. One of my favorite video though is I think the one you did bird watching and you did it on your GoPro. Yeah. I love that video. And then you told me it was a GoPro. I was like, what? Yeah. Is that when you got yours? Uh, yeah, shortly after, or no, short, just before that. And I'm like, he has one too, and that's what he's using it for? So guess what I started doing yeah, with it? Yeah, yeah. I, I, think, uh, I think people don't notice the quality of it that much. You know, it, it's your, like the content. You know what the other video I did with the GoPro was when I shot in Maine on the rocks. Mm. There, there's no other camera I would have had, you know, that could have done that job. And you would have felt comfortable I know. Doing that I was job. jumping from rock to rock right. with the Fuji. Right. And, oh, that was, see? Yeah. GoPro. We don't support it, but they Spon can support us. This episode's <laughs> sponsored by GoPro. To pay my mortgage. <laughs> yeah, we talked about this. This is what YouTubers do. They, yeah. They're like, you know, used cameras are the best. Especially if you buy them from K blah, blah, blah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, we just might as well put hey, it out there. Now that we're here. Yeah, KEH. <laughs> Actually, I've, I've bought from KEH. They're I fine. have too. But you know what? Honestly, is it me? Are they more expensive now than they used to be? I think the used market, camera market, has skyrocketed. Right, so they could take advantage of it. Because when I first bought um, Nikon gear years ago, it was drastically the best prices to get. You know, and, and, and they would tell you, like, this may not look pretty when you get it. Yeah. But, uh, but now I, I go online and, and nothing... I can't get cheaper on Facebook Market or or yeah. other places. Yeah, yeah. You know? I I think since there's been a plethora of cameras that have been released, they've mm. got tons of stock. And I think the demand for used cameras now is... It's, it's gone up. People during the, the pandemic wanted gear but didn't want to go out into the public to get it. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, what's the best way to get it than get it from a reputable yeah. consumer? And so. they are. They absolutely they, they are. are. They, they were good. They were uh, good with a... I tried to sell on there. They were good with a return. Again, this is the this is better than a sponsored video. This is like a exactly. real-life review. Right, right, right. So I think... Um, 
it's Mo and I talk about this all the time that we we are we watch these YouTube videos and then they, they slap you in the in. face with like oh and by the way they sneak all in the some. footage in this video was uh, story blocks right right but no no they're more nonchalant where you don't have to acknowledge that it's actually a sponsored video because they never said go buy it yeah they just have it all in your face. <laughs> And then the the person who's paying them underneath the table. This is yeah. me starting conspiracy theories. Yes, the people who who pay them under the table is like, yes, he's got our word out there. Maybe, and he doesn't have to list it as sponsored content. You know what's funny is some YouTubers are like really cool. Like um, Marquez uh, is sponsored by D Brand, mm -hmm. and somehow that doesn't offend me at all. No, because he doesn't do it in a way that's obnoxious. It's not obnoxious, pushy, or sneaky. Now, God, now my mind you, his level of. Video technology is obnoxious. He is so the Meticulous. next level. He's the yeah. next level of YouTube world. Like no one is on his level on the YouTube game. <laughs> yes. And and for him to just sit there and go, you know what? And it's very slippery. But you know what handles that? When I put on my D, D, D brand skin, <laughs> you know, link below. Check him out. Link below. Yeah, he doesn't link need below. to say anything. I mean, he just keeps rolling. Yeah. He, he, he rolls it in so smooth. Unlike unlike the other guy who who's a purposely obnoxious about it. You ever watch any Linus videos? Oh yeah, Linus yeah. Tech Tips. Yeah, yeah. He'll go. He'll he'll make. Oh, and that brings me now to my sponsor. Oh, that's even funnier. Yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah, that's a great it, way to he, do it. He makes it. a gag out of it every single time. So I I don't mind it either. There. Yeah, agreed. If you it's tongue in cheek kind of, and then yeah. everyone's like, all right, I'll he, listen to. He this. makes a horrible segue, but then he goes, it's a perfect segue for. <laughs> You're like, no, you actually, the, it's not. The other effective ad for me is Conan because you know Conan's. Uh, this is Conan O'Brien, his podcast. He'll read, like, he just gets a script. He has no idea, like, what the sponsor <laughs> is. Right. Hey, everybody. Conan O'Brien here to talk to you about something that's of crucial importance right now in America. <laughs> that's right, merchandise. <laughs> <laughs> of all the things happening right now, nothing's more important than what we call merch. Yeah. All YouTubers are fake. <laughs> <laughs> I will admit I'm that... I wouldn't say fake, but you don't want to be a downer right, right, when right. you're recording. Right. So you def I definitely record when I'm in a good mood. Mm -hmm. uh, there have been videos that I'm like, this is flat. Right. And so it's not that I want to be fake, but I want to wait till I'm real. But you let's know? be honest, though. It's nothing wrong. People don't turn on anything to be depressed yeah. or to not be picked up a little bit. They want to hear something about what they're looking for. But they want it to be something that they want to listen to. Like, we, oh, this is so exciting. Like, can yeah. you listen to somebody like that? No, you have to bring in that, hey, guys, this is what I'm checking out today. Yeah. And I just have a problem with people that take it to that next yeah. level. Like, the entire video is like, I love cheese. It's the best thing ever. <laughs> oh. Sponsored by Velveeta. Melt the cheese and bring it in. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. I agree. I agree. And we're, we're humans can pick up on phoniness. Phoniness. <laughs> yes. So I think when... Someone's like, hey, man, yeah. you know, yeah, that's, no one talks like that. No, that's why certain YouTubers get all those comments that are negative. Well, plus, one, you got the views, so they're probably happy about that. Yeah. Two, they got a comment, so they got an interaction. They're happy about that. But the comment is, dude, you're so fake. It hurts. Yeah, you know? yeah, it's like, yeah. And, and you could tell, like you just said, listening to someone, just you could tell that they're doing it for the wrong reasons at that moment. So I'll, I'll put you on the spot here. Do I ever, you know me more than, better than anyone in the world. So mm -hmm. are there times in my videos where I, I am faking it? I know you are, yeah. but, but it doesn't come across that way. Yeah. The way, the way you come across is always as, because see, I think this is where your teacher's background comes in handy. You are presenting a message to people who need to take that message in, and you're doing it in a that's, fun way. That's true. That's what I do. Yeah, so, yeah. so I think I, I picked that up. I it's picked more it up. like a performance. Right. Sometimes. You're doing yeah. a show. Think about think about your days of teaching, if we can go back there. You, you did a curriculum every year over and over again. Every single year, you did yeah, the same exact show. Yeah. And then yet... I always would hear people posting on your stuff, oh, Mr. Gonzalez, you're the best, yeah. because you know how to sell a product, and well, not sell a product, see, here we go, tell him I was talking about, you know how to pitch the story and educate people at the same time. Yeah, yeah, thank you, And that's you, thank exactly you. what you do on the channel, which is why people who love Fuji only still watch you, even though now you're a Nikon boy. <laughs> <laughs> Go Nikon. Oh, I was gonna say the thing with you. If I can turn it around poke here, egg. I didn't want to ask for constructive criticism. <laughs> I'm very no, delicate. My only I'm argument with your first few videos is you were shy. I am shy. <laughs> <laughs> you know why'd you laugh so hard? <laughs> because because I love you. Oh, and and I'm shy. I. I know you better than almost anyone, and I think like you're one of the most fun people to hang out with, mm. and you're loving. 
And I think like when you the first few videos when you turn the camera on, you were like, "Hi everyone, oh, fifty millimeter versus <laughs> touch it, look at it, it's nice." Yeah, you were a little shy, and it's, now it's awkward. Your it's awkward. Your last few videos has been you more, mm. you know. And when you're talking to people in the car and stuff, that's you. And I I think that's that's awesome to see you. I, yeah. Honestly, let me people. Someone asked me, "Why do you always film your stuff in the car?" And I'm like, to be honest with you, that's the most comfortable place for me to talk. Yeah, I d- I've been doing it for years, um, for one minute every day, so it just becomes my instant place to talk. And it goes back to no one sees you, hears you, yes, and the acoustics and are good. Everything's muffled in perfect. That's right. Yes. No need to add the black curtains. <laughs> no one knows. All right, so this is the Mo and O Photo Show. Hello. Hey, I'm Mo Morales. I'm Omar Gonzalez, and we are a podcast that talk mostly photography, but we're two friends. We go back from fourth grade, high school, and our love for photography is what keeps us together because we have nothing else to talk nothing about. Nothing at all. I hate this guy. <laughs> Yo, Neil. We're doing this for the uh, subscribers only. Yeah, we're doing it for the cash. <laughs> <laughs> we reckon now we're being fake. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you had our topic for today. Moa has been producing the show, which I love. So today's topic is about the event photographer. So let's talk gear, and and we're we're also talking what you need as a person too. Well, let me ask you this question yeah, first. Yeah. Let's start. Let's start with the very first question because I think the very first question I wrote down it was because it came to me so quickly. Is as a starting photographer. Do I need to specialize in an event or should I just take everything that comes my way? Should I do a uh, wedding? Should I do birthday? Should I do bat mitzvahs, Great bar question. mitzvahs? Great. Or do I want to build an, a specific event mindset that people will only recognize me with weddings and people will recognize me with mar- mit- bar yeah, mitzvahs, yeah. bat mitzvahs? So that's that's a question that someone asked me when I was actually in the thick of it. Yeah. And I said to them, you're just starting. You need to take everything in so you can learn how to start improvising at That's events. That's what I was about to say. I was about to say, you also don't know what you like. Right. So in the beginning, you and I did, uh, we did Sweet 16s. Mm-hmm. We did wet, like smaller weddings. And I got a few bat bar mitzvahs. And I realized a, a, like immediately that although I enjoy shooting weddings, like smaller weddings, mm-hmm. that I am not into huge 400 guests I have a team of four people behind me. 12-hour day. (laughs) Yeah, 12-hour day weddings. Right. Um, For a couple of reasons. The stress, number one. Mm -hmm. I think if you reach that level of like $10,000 photographer wedding New York City like superstar, that the the level of pressure is just... I'm not at that stage of my life. I definitely want things that are more happy and calm. Mm -hmm. So you have to know what you're... Like what your your goal is to be, what kind of photographer? So wedding photographer. So I realized I could do smaller weddings, but I enjoyed specializing in bat mitzvahs because bar mitzvahs and bat mitzvahs because of the family aspect of it. Right. Yeah. The whole um, the, the what's that word I'm looking for? Keep going because I can't think of the word. Uh, yeah. What I was gonna, what <laughs> I, I was gonna say too is no that uh, f- I I didn't take on any sweet 16s or any other sort of events like corporate events or mm-hmm. anything like that because the mitzvah started rolling in gotcha so in my case i was sort of pigeonholed into being specialized because mm-hmm. friend after friend after friend right they saw your work hey who, who did this for you omar did this for you. yeah I to to in omar. the beginning hey, omar, I was you cheap. Doing? yeah <laughs> yeah i was cheap easy great to hang out with and uh, got pretty good pictures in the beginning and so it was it was an easy like referral business gotcha. and then i think if you start to get referred after referred after fo- referred i think you kind of become specialized not by choice so but specialized by design as opposed to by decision yeah if you decide to be to diversify which is another smart move because you can kind of have like cor- you could set up your calendar where maybe you do corporate events like when they're the height mm-hmm. of the corporate events like when there's trade shows or whatever like I don't know how the corporate. Do you know how a corporate well, calendar you know, works? People have like year end parties. People have like, uh, like oh, true. especially if, if you if you work on a, a fiscal year, which is not necessarily a calendar year. There's there's usually events and stuff that happen during the end of a fiscal year where they're celebrating the, mm. the, the company's success and they'll bring in people to you know have a little party, a festival, and you can come in there and be the photographer of the day. You know, got it. Yeah, and there's also people who do um, conferences where you're photographing speakers, which is like, oh right. my god, it's as exciting as you know. <laughs> Chipping paint. Speeches. It's not even painting paint. <laughs> Chipping paint. <laughs> yeah, so I knew I wasn't into that. Uh, but as far as specializing, I think what, what you said was great is you should probably take 
different kinds of events, you know. And what's hard about that though is is I think that there are different uh, payment levels with, right. with the different events, right. you know. Let's talk about that too. I think if someone's doing like a small corporate, you're like a work for hire. You're right. not a superstar. You're they just want you to take snaps. Right. As opposed to maybe the superstar wedding photographer where you, where you have there. a style. On, Susan, look at me. Do this. Do yeah. that. You can't do that at the corporate office. They look no, at you funny. No, we're not doing portraits. Dude, yeah. what's wrong with you? Yeah. Back up, man. Why are you posing us together? <laughs> I don't even like Bob. Why is there Godox light bouncing off? <laughs> <laughs> uh, corporate event shot by Magmod. <laughs> Ding! You know, so I... I well, what what do you think is like a good way for people to get into event photography? Like, what should what events should they be looking for? Well, that, that's it. There's there's no set event because there, you have to go industry by industry to understand what that need would be. And the only way to get your foot in the door is is this is a true word of mouth type of thing. You have to know a, a VP in the office somewhere, or maybe a, an HR head or something like that. You you can't this corporate corporate photography. You you don't get into it by mistake unless you're doing headshots. Yeah, yeah. Then people can refer you that way. But to, to go in there and shoot their their constant events that has or to be kind of your thing. You have yeah. to know someone on the inside usually. Yeah. I know. I think I'm going to think younger than, uh, way younger than we are. Uh, I think if you did, I, my second shooter is a nightclub photographer. Mm-hmm. He's sort of getting out of it now, mm-hmm. but uh, they pay him a couple of hundred bucks to just start shooting the the dancers the and the dancers, club. The dancers, the DJ. Right. And believe it or not, that is the hardest type of photography because that's the reception. That's right. kind of like in a wedding, that's the reception photography, which right. is dark it, and... And nightclubs are darker than in a dark oh, wedding. yeah. And then, you know, the first of all, you know, does the crowd want to get, you know, photographed? Are you going to use If they're flash? drunk enough. <laughs> if, is, is the club ceiling too horrifically high? Always black. Yeah, it's you like, know, yeah so... Uh, I've been asked to do uh, Oof. DJ <laughs> DJ helper <laughs> fo- photography. Yeah, I've turned it down every single time because of those nightmares. I don't even feel like dealing with. Yeah, you know it, it is. It's it, strangers. You know, it's not like guests at a wedding mm-hmm. that are that know why you're there. You know, uh, I can be. I could just imagine being in a club and people just. You know, especially because you pop. Get the out of here, yeah, man. You're, you're yeah. popping a flash and stuff like that. Now, if you invited me to shoot a jazz performance, oh yes. you know, uh, or, or some kind of like concert. I would go do that for you, um, but a DJ nightclub style, no. But, but but what we're old, I think if you're young and you're always at the club. When, when I was younger in the game, I would turn it down. Well, you're lame. I, I was am there super like super lame. Tss, tss. No, I was never in the club. No, were I you was, a clubber ever? I had my moments. Y- you know, yeah, I'm gonna say yes. Because <laughs> because when I was uh, when I first moved back to New Jersey, an old friend of mine, Tony. He that's what he did every Friday Saturday night. Yeah. He would go to the club. Wednesday, there was Wednesday clubbing. There were Wednesday Thursday clubbing. 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 Yes, yes. Yeah. So we, we would go Tuesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. Yeah. We'd be in the club, and that's what he loved doing. And I love hanging out with my boy, so that's what we did. Yeah. And I, I don't regret any of it, but at the same time, I I, got, was, I lost years of my life. We're probably. too old. To, there's a great line by uh, Dave Matthews in one of his songs: "Is we're too old to want to be young again." Mm. You know, we we don't want to be standing on line to try to get into a club. No, we, no, no. we want to watch baseball right. on I the want couch. To comb my beard and just call it a day. You know, <laughs> dog, like you know, warm oh, on your kid. You right? That is that's my night. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I was watching a a clip from Friends where one of the guys was oh, saying yeah. that Fun Bobby's in town, and he's like, I just want to, you know. Be in bed. Oh no, it wasn't was Fun part- Bobby. It was Gandalf. I don't know. I didn't watch the whole thing. It was just a one clip that yep. happened to be saying that you know what's wrong with that? What's wrong with just wanting to be in bed go- early? Yeah, go, <laughs> yeah, go to bed like, at a reasonable hour. Yeah, it's true. So, uh, what was that tangent? Hold on, clubbing. We were talking back. about oh, club, club photography, event photography. Right, Got it. Right. So, I think that uh, the you should probably diversify to begin with until you realize what you like. But you realize what you like, and then the next part of that comes into, are you going to be a plus dollar amount photographer for these events, or are you going to be entry-level price range for these events? See, that's hard. And I, I think to answer the question for you before you get started... No, no you know what? Because I can't I even... For, an, no, I can't even answer it. Go ahead. So I think it was going to dictate to that is understanding your clientele. Yeah. Until you develop a price and people... If, first of all, there's nothing wrong with putting your prices... Somewhere somebody can see it at all times, yeah. right? But you better be comfortable with the photographer that you are when you put those prices on, on paper. Yeah, I believe you have to understand who do you want the job that badly and who is your clientele that you're aiming for. Because if you are an inner city with 
clients that are coming from you know poverty low income, to, yeah, low to, income. to mid low income not mid income mid low income down you got to price accordingly yes that's you right. can't charge them ten thousand dollars for a wedding when you know that's more than they probably make in two months in six yeah, months yeah. or whatever well i was gonna say it pricing is tricky too because you also want to give back to the industry you know you don't want to be the one that's bringing down event photography as an industry mm-hmm. so um i totally agree with like this lower income area that if you are pricing for that price, you know, that which, which is tough, it's hard to make a living if you're in that, you know, pricing for that mm-hmm. sort of area. Um, Quick you point. shouldn't be advertising in an area that can pay more mm-hmm. and you're like, I'll do it for a hundred bucks because right. you're bringing everyone down, right. you know. Let me, let me take one step back. I was able to get away with charging to, to accept lower jobs, just one for the people. And two for you know always staying sharp because I do have a full nine to five. Oh, true, true. If it's on the side, well, those are the ones. Those are the people, the photographers that are usually taking. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not afraid to look at an entire situation when someone comes to me. Can you do it for this much? I don't automatically turn those people away. I know, but but I've I understand been... exactly what you're saying, and that you can't set the market level pricing so low that it's going to impact other people coming in that want to do the work at a higher price that deserve to be paid at a higher price. True, but can I tell you a story? Tell me a story. I'll shut up. Now. In the beginning, when I was pricing, there were times where I was. Uh, there was a time there where I was like negotiating with like men that work Wall Street. Like they are such good negotiators that I would just talk down. Okay, I'll do it for this much, right? Mm-hmm. And then I go to the event, and they have like a clown, a magician. They have a, a photo booth. They have an extra, uh, like a band. A they caviar have a, massager. Exactly. <laughs> they have uh, sushi that runs around the room. They have, you know what I'm saying? But that's their job. They're- Hold on. But my point is, I realized at that point that you have to realize, like, how who do you want to be hired by? Do you want to be a work for hire? I was the same as the clown, as mm. the sushi, as the magician. Which is fine. So that was my job there. I was one of the works for hire, which is why I was talked down so low. They just money for all these little guys. Or do you want someone that is going to cross out the magician and cross out the sushi because they want you? Mm. Do you understand? Like Mm. your value is so high that you want clients that are like, I don't care. I just want the best freaking photographs from Mari family and for a van and the best portraits. I love his portraits. We want him. So honey... Uh, we're hiring him. That means we can't have the whatever. Mm-hmm. Well, you have to get there. Oh, you have to get there. Yeah, you just can't that- walk in the door and say, give me 10 Gs. <laughs> I want 10 Gs for two hours, nothing else. Yeah, but it should be if if this is your pathway of where you want to make a living. And by the way, we're talking like New Jersey, New York area right. where there's people with money. Right. If okay. you're in Carajo hey. land. Yeah, obviously you have to take the cost of living where you are into account when you think about these things. Yeah, and also adjust your cost of living with mm-hmm. how much money you're making. You're not going to live over your means. So you can make a good living, but you have to live within what's out there, you know? Right. Um, but what my whole point is that I realized that I didn't want to be work for hire. Any job that I did where I felt like I was work for hire... Um, it wasn't special. They didn't really care that I was there. They wouldn't give me the time of day f- to do portraits. You mm-hmm. know, it. I learned a lot in that those first few years where I was like, I want to. I want people to hire me that want to hire me. Right, right. Because you're you're chasing down the people for portraits that that you're they're paying for. Then they're gonna complain that they don't have exactly. And and I have a saying: they don't care until they care. Right. So they don't they don't care about you being. That is your there. saying. You yeah. do say that a lot, and it makes perfect sense. You know what Omar's saying? Say it one more time. They don't care until they care. You have to adopt that mindset because the client rather get drunk and enjoy their night than take five minutes for portraits. And guess what? When you deliver and, and Aunt Susan isn't in the picture yeah. and, and Bertha isn't in the picture and they're wondering, dude, I paid you all this money. Where are my photos? I know. So that's that. accept that mindset that Omar just told you because that's going to help you and save you. Yeah, I know. I know. And Think, I, the client, remember, the client wants to have fun. You're a professional that night. You're working. They're not. Remember that. Yeah. So I, I, I have had situations where the I don't care. I Again, these are all... I, the more you shoot, the more you learn, guys. The more jobs you take, you just start... Ad- at first, you know nothing, and you're trying to like survive. And then you get so confident that you can turn jobs away. You get what's called like the red rope. I, I learned this great mm. thing from this, like, this guy who was like a TED Talk, kind of. He called it the red rope policy. 
that's that's the level you want to be where you let in clients that you want to work with. Mm. In the beginning, you take any mm. job, right? <laughs> Your turnstile. <laughs> yeah, just just come no on rope. through. Just come on through. Come on through. <laughs> and then you are interviewing. It's amazing. It's like in my in my uh, emails, I'm like, I'd have that date available. Let's talk to see if we're a good fit for one another. That's where you want to be, right? Because you want clients that are like super cool, who are like okay with your policies or okay with like how you work right and again omar makes valid points but we take it back a couple steps that this is for you listening as an entry-level photographer you have to develop that confidence by doing the work below first build yourself up to that point don't don't start dictating things at a 300 hundred dollar price range yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. just be happy to get the job okay baby <laughs> If I'm a beginner photographer and I'm beginning to do events and I'm taking them all in until I can learn to specialize, am I going to be okay with just one zoom lens? Do I need to have a variety of lenses? What kind of gear am I going to need to get with? Now, now we're going to automatically assume that you have a respectable, uh, you know, crop sensor camera or full frame camera. It doesn't matter to me. I think yeah, you, yeah, it's you, true. You can take perfect, perfect pictures with both sensor sizes. Um, and the next question is, do I need to have I love a, this question, by a, the way. a, a 24 it. to 70? I'm so dying to answer this. Do I need a 24 to 105? Does it have to be F4? Does it have to be F2.8? Right, Go ahead. Shoot. Okay, so we're assuming, let's just say small weddings. Right. Right, the person's small weddings or sweet 16s we're gonna or, say 20 or reunion people or less. parties. 20 people or less at this wedding. Okay, 20 people or less. The lens doesn't matter. What's What matters more is that you understand exposures and lighting and quality of the pictures. Mm. So I I think that someone could shoot a whole event with just a 35 F2, right? They right. could rock those pictures. If there's 20 people, they could get group shots with a 35. They could shoot the ceremony with a 35, right? They could do the whole thing with a 35. But if they don't understand lighting and how to position people and compositions that are like intriguing, mm -hmm. the pictures are gonna suck, whether they have a zoom lens or a prime lens. I see so many people in my industry, they post pictures up on Instagram that are horrible. And by the way, it doesn't really matter sometimes because if you read the comments from the family, they're like, I love them. This was uh, uh, magic. Why is it so green? Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> That's our photographer, Brian. Like, the why photographer is it so green? Brian is like, why is this lighting so harsh? Right. Oh, and it's like, oh, amazing. Why am I killing myself for like dreamy <laughs> portrait lighting? No. But going back to what you said, what lens, I think more important to begin with, to get good photographs, I think composition and lighting is more important because you could always figure out what to do with that single prime lens. Mm -hmm. Even if you had to shoot a, a wide of a church with a 35, you could do a pano in an emergency. Mm -hmm. You could shoot nine squares Just tell them, hold still <laughs> <laughs> well you shoot them and then you're like this building is not going to move let me stitch this later right so um i i think but you know what if a photographer knows how to do that they know to carry a, <laughs> a zoom lens that's uh, wide enough to fit that in <laughs> he doesn't want to do that in post <laughs> yeah, exactly he, i, I mean, was thinking that i mean if you need to you can yeah yeah but but to, to better answer your question, a zoom lens to begin with that is at least 2.8. I think everyone should have a 2.8. You could get away with an F4. You could totally get away with an F4, except weddings start to get a little low light. Like right. reception gets mm -hmm. low light. And um, so I would say a zoom lens, you could survive with one flash. I would say two flashes. Two flashes, two cameras, um, maybe one prime and one zoom. Right. And have your prime be like a 1.8. You know, you could have a, I would say a 50 1.8 is go. great. You got nifty 50 for the, for the crop sensor, the 35 F 1.8. There's plenty of lenses out there that you can get away with at a nice entry level price. You could buy them used. The 50 1.8. Right. Everyone's got a cheap 50 right. and right. the pictures look better than a, a, a kit lens. Exactly. That, yeah. Exactly. So uh, to that, to that point is, is I believe the same way. Um, if you, if you have an F 4, Make sure that your camera can handle a little higher ISO. Yeah. And know what your ISO limit is before the event. Don't walk into an event, start shooting at 6,400 ISO, and then have nothing but snowflakes on your picture. Yeah, images. have you seen this before? I, I, there's, it seems like a lot of event photographers are like very afraid of lighting. I've worked so hard to like try to get my lighting indoors, like try to hammer it down. I'm still learning. Like, look, from Georgie's wedding, which we'll talk about a little later, 
I that was a technique I used for the first time and I loved it. Oh, it came out amazing. Yeah, yeah. So like I'm always trying new things and always learning. And there's people who crank up the ISO to one twenty eight thousand mm-hmm. because they don't want to use flash. They use the ambient. Right. And I some of those pictures work if the DJ has good lighting. Right. If he has a nice purple ambiance yeah. look. Yeah. It, yeah. it looks great if you're shooting at one point eight or one point four and the room has good ambiance. But Which is why some people preach that you have to have the one point two lens true, because true. They, they're going to they're not, not use flash. anything else at all. Yeah. So that's why some people preach that. I'm not a preacher of that. Yeah. I'm a preacher of know your ISO limit. If you're rocking an F4, you better have a flash somewhere. Yeah. Um, you know what? Honestly, it, you buy a flash and a stand to put it on, you save the hundreds of thousands of dollars you would have spent at an F1.4. Yeah. Um, but I believe, yeah, I, I, I like the look when it's done right of no flash. But I honestly also like the kiss that a flash provides. Totally, totally. It, like that little poof. Yeah. It just, especially it, it, not, not when you go into that street photographer flash in your face look yeah but that nice kiss of light that just brings out the people's eyes because there's nothing more important to me than a spark in the eye yeah yeah i think that would make any photo much better than a dead eye photo (laughs) totally so again save the money on uh, not buying a super expensive lens get yourself a nice flash to put somewhere on a stand maybe a little controller for the flash Mm -hmm. if you don't want to have the flash on top of the camera but that's those, a little are, advanced, though. Yes, yeah, so I was going to say those techniques yeah. you learn with time. So start off with the camera, a flash on top of the camera, and if you bounce can, it, and get yourself a little rogue bender. Yeah, yeah, you know, or, you, or make your own. With remember the old days? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Bet, oh man, I was like cutting out. I used, to, car, I used to make index cards for my job and just rubber band it on top, and that's how I did it. Yeah, I was so ghetto and wonderful. But it worked, man. Yeah, we it made was magic. Wonderful. Yeah. Now we're too good for that. Yeah, the, I have two. <laughs> I'm flash. so snobby. If you can only have two primes to shoot a wedding, what would they be? I think you just named them. I would think I would either go 35 millimeter and an 85. Yeah, that's what I was going to answer too. Or with today's, with especially if you have a full frame, today's variety of 24 millimeters are just amazing. Yeah. Between the, the the GM by Sony all the way to the ones by Sigma, they're all amazing little lenses. And it makes you much wider than the 35. And if you have a full frame again, you could use that ASP crop thing. Oh, that's thing. right. The I crop love mode that. Is, especially because... Can well, explain what that is? The so, crop mode? So on some cameras, you could program... My, my full frame A7C that I'm holding in my hand here... Um, I could program a button so that I'm shooting what, on the camera right now is a 24 the, mil. You're shooting the full sensor. I have the full sensor right now with my 24 millimeter. But if I push this one button, it now crops in my full frame to a crop sensor. So I'm now at 1.5 oh, ratio. Oh, it is 1.5. 1.67 or 1.5, somewhere and, in that range. But it lowers the megapixels. It lowers the megapixels from 26 to 13, 14, okay, somewhere in that range. Okay, which is good enough. Very acceptable. Yeah, very acceptable. Very acceptable. And, and that now gives me a punch. So now I'm at 35. Yeah, so if, so, if like someone's doing a speech or something and mm. you have a 50 on then you can make it kind of like 85 ish sort of especially which especially cool. if you're at the point where you don't have time to swap lenses yeah i mean obviously if you had the 85 in your bag with this lens you could swap it but you might miss something during that i speech. would recommend two cameras if you're really like a super prime shooter mm-hmm. can i liberate some of you though i have been so happy shooting the sony a7c with Tamron Trifecta. Three. What did I say? You said C. Oh, sorry. A7. Don't look at my camera, man. <laughs> Back up, son. No, only one card slot on that puppy. Yeah, I the A seven three with the Tamron Trinity. Right. Seventeen to twenty eight, mm-hmm. twenty eight to seventy five, and the seventy to one eighty. I I've shot I um, this is on the list to make a video on this too. I didn't bring any primes and so liberating. I go from the just that middle guy. I think if you wanted to get away with the twenty eight to seventy five, that's it. You would be golden too. I mean, I've you done would that be, before, you would except be for my style, of, uh, my style of reception, close and wide. Gotcha. That's the only thing. But but again, you, that's your style. I'm saying they can get away with the 28 oh, to 75, and it's a very affordable absolutely. lens too. Absolutely, I would say the 28 to 75. You, if you're a Sony shooter. Just get that lens. That's if it. you're starting out, That's that it. lens is so great close up. It's a magical lens. Like You have it? I have it. Tamron turned the game around when they brought out that lens. I love that Because lens. before that, I would never buy a Tamron lens. Then, I, then, then everyone was talking about... That's a lie. I had a cheapy 30, no, 70 to 30 hundred. I know 70 for, 300. for Nikon, yeah. but I think that thing can't focus. You know what, though? But the closeness that I was at, I was perfect. <laughs> but anyway, no, but that, I sold that lens and I never looked back at Tamron. And then people started talking about this new Sony 28 to 75. It's butter. It's magic. And I'm like, it's a Tamron. Get out of here with that. I know. And then Sigma I, at that time had respect already. Right, they had the they art had, series. They had the art series lens. Yeah. And then, But then when I actually tested this lens and played with it, I'm like, this can't be a Tamron. Tamron. But then Tamron kept putting out quality lenses after that. So 
don't be afraid to do third party lenses. What we're saying, don't believe those those purists that are always yeah, saying. I think Tamron has gotten over that hump. Like no one's really saying anything bad with them except not weather sealed. And right, right. And remember, even even pure lenses from the name brand can be garbage. Yeah. So just because it says Nikon or it says Sony when you put it on your body, it doesn't make the lens amazing automatically. Can I go back on one thing I said? Take it back. Are we baby. allowed? Let's go backwards. All right. I'm going to go back on mm-hmm. the whole 2.8 thing. Yeah. <laughs> that was our wave back machine. <laughs> <laughs> the flux capacitor. Um, 2.8? I, I, said, I said get a 2.8, but right. that's BS. I thought that was snobbish when you said it. Right? But it was totally snobbish. But, but I let it roll. <laughs> Oh, like, that's, was, that's your opinion. I was you know, going to have it, you know? You know what I'm realizing is that I shoot 2.8 if I'm zoomed in on one person, mm-hmm. right, to get a nice bokeh background or get some cool lights in the background looking nice. But for the most part, for safety, I'm always at 3.5 F4 because I shoot for reception. You're close to people right. or there are groups of people. Right, and you want to make sure noses are in show focus. Yeah. So I, I think it's probably better to get an F4 and raise your ISO just so the cameras are so good with high ISO. Think about think about all the great shots you got that 24 to 105. Oh, my God. The 24 to 105 from Canon, that, yeah. that, that, that was, was a an great F4. travel lens. But, 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 but think about how many great shots you rocked out with that yeah, little beast. Yeah, agreed. And I think, that, I think if you could afford something like that for your camera, uh, 24 to 120, the 24 to 105, 24 to 135, whatever your specific brand puts out there that's an F4, most of them come back with great reviews for what they are. Don't ever don't ever think that's going to be the end all be all best lens ever. Yeah. That's more than satisfactory type lens. I was going to say we do become we become snobby yeah. because I had a 70 to 200 Canon's F4. Mm-hmm. That lens was small, sharp. I look at those pictures, I'm like, that lens was great, but I had to get the 2.8, which is also amazing, but it's a tank. It's right. huge. It's a and, tank. It's expensive. But you uh, you get snobby. As you get better, you're like, I want a 2.8. Right. And, it, and, it, and it's just to have the 2.8 because you know you can still rock the F4 if you had to, and, but, uh, but but you yeah. don't want to. I know. I, I'm already snobby. No, I, no, when you saying. said, uh, uh, I don't know, would you get a 135 F4? If, if, it you, was drop, if you dropped your... your Tamron 70 25 to 70 uh, you're, no the, 80, to 70? the 70 to 8 180 let's say you dropped yes. it that's a 2.8 but I give you uh, uh, the Sony uh, 7200 F4 you're going to take it and yeah. you're still going to make magic oh, right? Yeah. I've used that lens I'm not saying you would want to I'm saying you could still make magic with those lenses I don't think people notice anyway it's just us it's us it's the photographer snob mind I know it really oh, is oh we're evil we're our worst enemy we although are. I will say that I I didn't have hopes for this fifty one point eight. I always think a fifty one point eight is boring. I like one point four. Right, because everything 2. melts away. There's no uh, one in the background. One point. <laughs> <laughs> There's no subject. Yes, just his nose. <laughs> so sharp. Look at that. I get, I it's got a the... pimple on there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so artsy, man. Oh, I've got talent, baby. Drink me in. <laughs> I want to buy a, a one thousand millimeter one point oh. Oh, that thing would weigh more it's than a I do. Poor, I just shoot pores. <laughs> I think that uh, I was kind of snobby. I was like, I can't shoot this 51.8. And this is what I shot at Georgie's wedding. Right. And oh, my God. The pictures are so and, awesome. And, and who's Georgie? Georgie is our old high school friend that we got invited to his wedding. Right. So he's a friend of yours, huh? I, I think so. Oh. So what were you doing shooting at his wedding? Uh, I brought my camera because I I offered to. He oh. didn't. He didn't really have. He was. He, Georgie is so low key that he had just a friend bringing a camera. So I was a little nervous. I'm like, I hope he has backup to the backup. You know? Segway. Go ahead. <laughs> so, should you just shoot randomly at your friends' events to um, either no. with no permission, with permission, as a gift, as a friendly gesture to help them out, to help yourself as a learner? All right, I will. So say, many questions. <laughs> I love all those questions. I will tell you that I've been, in, I've been, in, I was invited to one wedding, and the guy said, "And if you want to bring your camera, middle finger. <laughs> I won't put it up, but we won't get blocked." <laughs> but a middle finger was given. Um, that's just that's kind of that's kind of low class. Right. It's like if you want to bring your camera and take pictures, we'll feed you. That's right. that's basically what he right, said. Right. You know? Listen, if you want to give me my your thousands of dollars worth of work for a sandwich. <laughs> Feel free. I was like, how good are the hors d'oeuvres? First of all, what kind of prosciutto are we talking about here? <laughs> how thinly sliced is it? Is, right? it? is it from Parma? <laughs> Don't play with me. Don't you play with my emotions. Is there a magician? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, we cut them so you could come <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for free. <laughs> so I think uh, I think I, coming from that way is like, no, I don't want to be invited to a wedding 
to be the photographer. That's number one. Right. However, if someone doesn't really have a photographer, I feel like it's almost like I don't know. I don't. I don't think I was invited to Georgie's wedding because no, I, no, no. We no. we understand that both of us were invited. We're both photographers, and we both were not told to bring our cameras. He told us not to bring our camera. He he's like, it's cool if you bring it. Whatever you want to do, right? And um, I felt that first of all, I have I've been trying to learn the Nikon Z 62 so I wanted to bring it anyway. Mm-hmm. And the lo- his location was super cool. And I love Georgie. I wanted right. him to have... How could you not love Georgie? I know. And I, I wanted like him that. to have great photos in case like his his photographer didn't work out. Um, so I brought my 105 1.4. That is just like a dream lens. Mm. And uh, yeah, I, I also haven't shot a wedding in a long time. So I, ha- I had fun doing it. And I told you this later, is that I haven't been at an event for so long, like drinking and dancing. I've only been at them working. Right. So I didn't know how to blend. <laughs> Be normal. Yes. Be the unphotographer. So this is me at the bar. Like I was like the <laughs> baby don't hurt me. And he's the, telling in his mind, he's like, photographer, move this way. Move this way. The, don't miss that shot. And I it, kept thinking like a photographer yes, the whole night. Yes. You know, and and I but I don't get me wrong, I enjoyed the night. I right. had like the most fun. Um but I see moments. I don't right. really. You and I have had this conversation right. before. And Do you live us. in real life? So, or wait, wait. Let me ask. No. Me. Do you live in real life? And I realize that sometimes I don't live in real life. I live in like photo life. Mm-hmm. I'm looking. Oh, tsk, everything. Tsk. Everything is a moment of, yeah. that can be photographed. So, the hours before the event, I said to Omar, "Should I bring my camera and just be an extra photographer in the background?" I was like, "No." He's like, "Don't do it, dude. Don't do it." And I get there. I and wanted one. I wanted to save one of us. Like one of us should be a guest. But the whole entire time, I'm thinking like, if I had my 85 right now, <laughs> man, I could snap that like Yo, butter. You took a great shot with your phone. At least you. Because you know what? I got phone practice. You know, <laughs> I know what I'm doing. I got that wide shot. I love that wide shot. Yeah. Um, but. That's the whole thing. So that was you as uh, just bringing your camera because you wanted to and you actually, at the same time, you knew you could help him with some photos and you could help yourself at learning. I did the, help the, myself. So that takes it back. Yeah. If if you know a friend, if you're new, yeah. you're Johnny, just got my... No, I've had my camera for a while, but I'm not used to doing events. And I know... Johnny's going to have a, a wedding. Johnny's going to have a birthday party. Should I ask Johnny, does he want me to bring my camera, or should I just bring my camera and take photos and work it? How would you help yourself as a beginner become better at events, even though you're not being paid to be yeah, at Yeah, I event? would say maybe not weddings at first, like things that are like maybe barbecues mm-hmm. or um, say, can I, t- I'm going to take some pictures of everyone and post them. I mm-hmm. think the least stressful thing is with where you're, you're with your friends, backyard, everybody's drinking, and you're going to start capturing moments. Right. Because the same stuff you do at the barbecue is what people love from your wedding photography. Laughing, hugging, mm-hmm. um, grabbing grins. You know, So you, you're going to get so comfortable shooting with friends and you're going to see that your best pictures are people, uh, what are called candids. You know, right. Just capturing candids. Look at me like, what are called candids? Candids is the word you're looking for, sir. <laughs> Keep it moving. Forward, forward, and shoot. So uh, I think... Georgie's wedding for me was completely liberating because I felt awkward not having a camera. Mm-hmm. And I felt oh, I don't com- know that feeling. I felt comfortable dancing, which is what I do when I work, and shooting people having fun. And mm-hmm. I had fun. Hey, by the way, do you know that I messed up at Georgie's wedding? <gasps> Give myself. When I went into my bag to grab my flash, I grabbed the flash, which was the speed light I was going to put on top. Mm-hmm. These are happy accidents, by the way. And I didn't. The battery stayed here in the office, oh. which would never happen in a real event of mine. Because before I go take off, I unzip the bag and I double check every device right. to make sure that if this one breaks, I have this one, and if this one breaks, I have this one. So at Georgie's event, I had no flash. So the bag that I always bring with me has a flash in it ah. with a trigger in it. Oh, uh. super backup. Nice. So Excelente. it was like this guy. It was yeah. a light stand with a... So I tr- I ended up... Like I said, Georgie's wedding was awesome for me because I was like, you know what? I'm going to try okay. this new technique. <laughs> Here we go. I put a trigger on top of my camera, which I never do. I usually shoot on camera flash because right, I get close to people. Right. This time I'm like, I can shoot a little further away. Mm-hmm. 
And in the corner, I have a light that's lighting everyone up. And to me, I loved it. Oh, I loved it too. Again, go go to my Instagram, find the pictures. I'll put some up here in okay. the episode. I'll put some up. Yeah. Look, if you notice if the pictures of me specific, I just want people to check me out. Oh, all right, great. I'll so, zoom in on your nostrils. No, not that one <laughs> with, the, with the F1.4. <laughs> <laughs> you mean the one point knock? The knock. <laughs> the zero knock, negative two. But anyway, yeah, if you see it, like you could tell when it's darker in the event, when he's using that another t- that separate technique of that flash in the corner that's just giving you the little a little pop because you notice the I background. call it a kiss. Yeah, I, I you notice the background. Kiss. You could see you could oh, see the city even yeah, in the background. It was so it's beautiful. Very cool. It was so beautiful. All right, that ends my list of things. I think that should wrap up us for today because we've given up away too much for free. They yeah, just you drinking know what? it in. I know this was so free. Actually, uh, <sighs> okay. you've been charged. We have a little program that software <laughs> into your computer. Uh, one penny from everything. Thing you thought about it's been <laughs> taken every one all right guys this was super fun i hope you learned something uh tell us if you know i really would love to hear from people a little bit more i love by the way thank you those of you last time that didn't complain about our production value because i was really angry that we had a lot of echo and i tried to make this one a little better um, I think we need to take pride in like our production value. Last we one. do, we do. You know what? It's just that we weren't aware of it. I know. You know we I, had. I, I, I put up some moving blankets and stuff to try to help with the echo, but no one complained. So I want to just say 100% thank you. You guys listen to the content. You know what? They were just happy to hear from us. Yeah, They're like where are these that's guys why been? I love you. Like that. That means so much to me. And again, our audience is small enough that the people that are around are here for us, right? Right. Instead not, of against us. So yeah, yeah. damn it, I love you guys because. I see those thumbs up. It's like 60 up, zero no likes, you know? Yeah, so I cried in the inside when that happened. But we're not going to talk about that now. Oh, gosh. I love you guys. <laughs> Thanks so much for leaving comments. And if you are thinking about event photography, let us know, man, if you have any questions. Yeah, because we're not afraid to... We're, we're not asking you for episode advice, but we're not afraid to address your questions either. Yeah, Mo, we'll do it all. All right, all right I'll all see right. you next time. <laughs> Please. <laughs>